Thank you for staying with us. Well, we're still talking about the drama that has ensued within the APC in Bielsa State. Apparently, the APC in Bielsa State, as of this afternoon, has no governorship candidate for the elections that's coming up in two days. And I did tell you one of my guests was just around the corner, and he's here. Dosun Alaribe is a, a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. Nice for having me. So, I was just asking my learned friend here, they say that, you know, we learn from our experiences. Um, experience, we say, in Nigeria is the best teacher, but I don't know if the Everywhere. APC has learned anything from all of these sayings. Mm, well, APC has nothing to learn. You see, because in the beginning, see, APC as a party was formed as a special purpose vehicle just to snatch power from Jonathan. So you don't expect anything from APC. You see, there's no defined ideology, there's nothing. So you're going to see people at each other's throats, you know what I mean? It's the winner-takes-all situation we have in Nigeria. So, I mean, we, we, we just came up with this Zamfara example now. Same thing playing out in Bayesa, you know what I mean? So, well. But one would have thought that <laughs> after the Rivers case, which was really, really painful because, I mean, they lost everything, everybody lost, I mean, not just the governorship seat, but they lost every Everything, ticket yeah. <laughs> that they would have learned. But then it happened in Zamfara. And then months, I was just asking him, several months down the line, when you saw that something wrong was going to happen, could there not have been a remedy of sorts to avoid this happening or dragging one another back into the courts? Who is going to provide the remedy? So you need, but there look, is a national working committee. There is a party chairman. There's even a party leader. Look at the party chairman as a case in point. They are having suspension galore in, in those states. I mean, so that's the person that's going to come and call people to order. You know, you see, it is gaigo, garbage in, garbage out. You don't expect nothing. APC is not a party. But but <laughs> does this also show uh, paint a picture of how we are as Nigerians? Because you know, there seems to be a if it's not me, then there's it can be anybody else. So. These political positions or these running for offices are supposed to be to serve, the purpose behind it is to serve the people, is to bring your ideas to the people on how to help them. But it looks more like it's about the politicians and not necessarily the people. So the people are, have somewhat been tossed out of the picture? The people are of no consequence in Nigerian politics. We're not practicing democracy. You see, there's, there's, uh, no, there's no ideology. But it's a democracy that we are practicing. Oh, no, no, no. We are practicing civil rule. Not, this is not democracy. You see, because democracy is based on rule of law. I mean, that's the major plank of democracy. But here, I know, it's impunity. You, you're going to do this and get away with it. I, I know the people in that place. I'm connected to power. So I'm going to flex my muscle. That's what we have, you know. It is not reflective on Nigerians. It is. The system. But these politicians are Nigerians. Yes, they are, they, no, I mean the politicians. They, they are different. They, but they are Nigerians, they are and, and, they're, and they're cut from our, our different local government areas. They, they didn't jump from the moon. They are from amongst us, and the people who stand by them are also our brothers and our sisters. Can we really say that these people are different from us? Is that the average way the average Nigerian plays politics? You see, Nigeria, it is the politician and the masses. The masses are there for the taking. Give them 50 naira, 100 naira, the recall of rice, election time, that's all. After that, go on for years, you know what I mean? The politician, is, the politician is all about the politician. I mean, they're not making policies. You see, I keep saying we don't have visionary people in Nigeria. We're living for the next election. We have just had 2019 election. What is on the floor now? Everybody's angling for 2023. Buhari has not even done one year. We're already talking of 2023. I mean, nobody cares. Look at all the roads in Lagos. Is, 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 they're not motorable. I mean, some medias are already promoting somebody to go for president 2023. I mean, give me a break here. You know what I mean? Let's move away from the APC and talk about the PDP. Still in Biosa State, there was uh, some form of a um, campaign. I think they had a convention there today. Uh, we'll take a look at what happened because we hear that uh, it didn't really end well. We have a little video clip we got uh, to show us a, a bit of what happened in Bayelsa State. <laughs> I'm 
Oh, move, 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 move. Au oh, bon, il y a un temps à faire ça. I would want to believe that that was um, those were firecrackers. I, I don't want to believe that those were gunshots. But that's another political party, the opposition, the biggest opposition the APC has in Bayelsi State. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that that was their own campaign just before the elections. And it ended up with gunfire and people running helter-skelter. Again, is this how we should be practicing politics in Nigeria in the uh, 21st century. The first thing you need to do is remove campaign, because nobody's campaigning. Use show of force. You see, in Nigeria, you have the politician. I'm involved. You have the politician. You have the tug, area boy, uh, union, transport. Then you have the people. The politician will bring the tug to come and enforce and call you to order where they want you to go. See, that's not a campaign now. And we don't even campaign here. You see, we, nobody tells anybody what they want to do when they get there. They just say, hey, APC, uh, power, PDP, power. Hey, APC, uh, PDP, that is the campaign. Then the musician will come on board and start sing, playing music. And then they decide what they want to do, and we go home. That's what they call campaign. That's not campaign, you know. When we see videos like this, uh, Mr. Noble, and, and we see people running, how do we expect those same people that gunshots are being sprayed or fired at to show up at the polls to cast their votes. I mean, 2019 is about to end. Another election year, like he said, is coming in 2023. We should be getting our acts together, but instead, this is what we're seeing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, so I want to make for so there is a, some times ago I saw a cartoon, you know, where someone was asking a politician, that despite your bad reputation in the society, you're still winning elections. What's the secret? Person I replied that because the masses are myopic, because they have short memory. I mean that's that's a, like that's like a parody, but then again, it has deep meaning to into what we see in Nigeria. I mean, these people out there who went for um, the PDP's campaign and they are running away you know, uh, because their lives are at risk. I mean, it's so sad, it's so shocking. It's, it's not head off. I mean, it's not supposed, if you, campaigns are, 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 are supposed to be platforms where politicians come to showcase what they would offer to the people and not a platform where people would have to run for their lives. So I think it's shocking, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's appalling. It's not something quit Nigeria at this stage should be witnessing. It's, it's but, a, we are ashamed of it. I mean, so state has been known, by also rivers have been known as hotbeds when yes. it comes to elections, electioneering, even the campaigns. On election day, there always has to be bad reports from by also state. Uh, and I'm wondering to myself, is it because the police is unable to enforce some, some, some form of decency or decorum during, before and after the elections or at these campaigns? Because, of course, there are a lot of police officers or security agents that will be at those places, but it keeps reoccurring. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to coin it in a way that it doesn't sound bad. Why does it keep happening in Bielsa State and Rivers, where we have so much violence? Okay. Is it about the people or is it just that? I don't know. Okay, so... Um I don't think people have been able to explain why Bayasa states, River states, and uh, to some extent, maybe Abia state to some, well, I think Abia state to some extent, uh, you know, uh, are termed as a hostile uh, political environment. I mean, they've not still explained the reason why, but from our own, from, from, you know, from what we've seen around, we, we, we can um, 
say it's because of the rich deposit of oil. Don't forget that these two states are, 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 are states so I don't that have understand, a, because I have so much oil in my land, I wait for election days to cause mayhem and if fight, you, grab if, ballot boxes. If, if, I, if I may chip in there, so you, you, you need to understand one thing. Go historical. You see, um, Rivers Angle has always you know, been voting with the mainstream, I mean, the party in power at the center, mm. right from Shagari and all those kind of things. Now. Look, at, at the other end of democracy, when PDP was in power, you see, we used to return two million votes from River State. That means from the time you do registration till the year we're going to vote, nobody's going to die, nobody's going to move, nobody's going to relocate from River State. The same two people that registered will be the same two people, two million votes we're going to return in election time. Now, what you are saying in River State now is that, you no, know, Amishi is in the mainstream now. PDP, and traditionally, PDP, Rivers is PDP, Bayesa is PDP, traditionally. You see, but now you have Tempriye Silva, Bayesa is in the mainstream. So, you see, when you have federal mind behind you, you can come in and you know, try to, you know, you see, they are fighting for tough. Fighting for, it's just like the um, National Union of Road Transport in Lagos. When this one is the chairman here, this one will bring his people, maybe he has the backing of the overlord boss. You see, our politics is such that if I pick my phone now, I call my rep, he's not going to answer me. But let that thug call him, he's going to answer. Because it is that thug that's going to snatch ballot box for him on the day of election. But all these things are done at the detriment of the people who really need government the most. The people are not ready, like I keep saying. This How is, do you mean? Let me put it this way. You see, like, you have a polling booth of 500 people. On election day, you see only 30 people come out there. Because they are votes do not count. This is not count. Well, don't go and vote. Don't go and waste your time. So that's, they have given us that impression already. So we don't go out to go and vote. When we don't go out to go and vote, when a ballot, a polling booth of 500, only 30 people come, you have the uh, polling agent, you have the INEC official, and you have the policeman. Then this party will bring food. Then somebody will drive around. It's first hand experience. Somebody will drive around, we'll just say, hey, who's the our agent here? Who's the supervisor? Or give him 20,000. He will give the policeman, he will give the INEC. And then they will give the opposition party agent. This is this is a very strong allegation. It is, it is a fact. You mean that police officers and INEC representatives take bribes yes. at polling units? Yes. And you have proof? I, I have proof. Okay. <laughs> I have proof. <laughs> well, <laughs> but this, but, but so you're saying that this this is a systemic problem. It's not just isolated. It's it is, not a, just it is systemic. You see, I, I, like, I contested for Senate last election. I know what I'm talking about, you see. See, by the time you get to the coalition center, you see, somebody has already brought money. You know what I mean? They've given the INEC um, coalition officer, the one that they bring from the university, they've, they'll share it down the line. So the up... Anyway, I know what I'm talking about. How do we go, go move past this era? Will we, in the next 20 years, be able to look back and say, we have grown or we've gotten better? Or are we still going to be running around in circles? No, we just need people to come out. You see, a polling booth of 500 people, by the time you see 400 people come out to come and vote, there's little room for manipulation. But when it's only 30 people or 50 people that come out, I mean, you have 450 empty spaces. We're going to do everything to fill it up. Okay. How do we change the mindset that, oh, well, my vote is not going to count no matter what, so they've already decided who's going to win. How do we get over that mindset for us to be able to accomplish what she's saying, come out en masse to cast our votes. Okay, so first of all, what we need to consider is are the government doing enough in terms of um, electoral uh, policies? Are they doing enough to make sure that our votes count? Are they, are they giving us the enabling environment to, to go and uh, exercise our franchise? Are they giving us adequate security, you know, you know to you know, to guarantee our safety, the safety of our loved ones, that once they go out to go and vote, they will come back, you know, sound and safe to us. I mean, if all these things are in place, you know, I don't think anyone will have the mindset of, of oh, my vote will not count. Because it's not about my vote will not count. Because not everybody has that kind of mindset that my vote will not count. So some other people have the mindset that if I go there, will I come back to my house alive? 
And so and, is the, and, exact, and this is the responsibility of the government to provide you know, good structure for us in this country. Well, I want to say thank you, Dutton and uh, Noble. But they're not going anywhere. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, well, uh, are the men of the Nigeria Customs Service involved in extrajudicial killings? Well, we'll get to find out when we come back after the break. Stay with us.